Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel, Kalinati. Today I'm going to talk at probably great length about Foreigner by C.J. Cherry. Foreigner is a science fiction novel published in 1994, and it's the first in a series that is now 20 books long. However, the story arcs in the series are chunked into trilogies, so you could kind of see Foreigner as the first book in a trilogy, and there are more books after that if you want to keep reading. I first read this book when I was 12, and I have since then read the first nine books in the series, so all of my thoughts here are going to be heavily influenced by my already established enjoyment and love of this series. However, this review will be entirely spoiler-free. Foreigner begins with a two-part prologue. In the first part, we learn how a ship has left Earth to establish a colony base elsewhere. During an FTL jump, something goes wrong, and they end up lost in space. The crew has no idea where they are or how to return to Earth, and they need to refuel, restock, and survive in the unknown. Then in the second part of the prologue, we jump ahead 150 years and learn that the ship crew have established a station in orbit around a planet that is amenable to human life. Some of the stationers want to establish a base on the planet, but they know it is already inhabited by a sentient alien species. Sees. They do manage to go down, and they kind of accidentally make first contact with the aliens, who are called a Tevi. Then, after another time jump of 150 to 200 years, the real story of this book finally begins. At this point, human society is confined to a single island on the planet, and there is a treaty set in place which requires the humans to basically pay rent on their home by slowly handing over technological information to the Atevi, who are rapidly closing in on their own space age. We are introduced to the main character of the book, a human man named Bren Cameron. He is the Paidi, or interpreter, the only human allowed into a Tevi society who translates, interprets, and mediates between humans and a Tevi. The story proper begins rather explosively with an assassination attempt against Bren. He's very confused, he doesn't seem to believe that his role as Paidi is that important or influential enough to warrant an assassination, though the Atevi do practice legal assassination. He is whisked off to the Atevi leader's country estate, presumably for his safety, but there are a lot of questions that nobody is answering. Essentially, the story is all about how humans and Atevi are different, and all of the history that has led to this point where there is peaceful stability between the two races. And now something is threatening that stability, something is about to change, and Bren is thrust into the middle of this chaos. So first I want to talk about the things I loved about this book, and then about some of the frustrations I encountered upon rereading it. One of the best things about Foreigner is the world building. Cherry doesn't just drop in the world building as a pretty backdrop, it is important. You can be sure that every single thing that is mentioned or shown to you will be important at some point in understanding people's actions or situations. The plot and the world building are completely intertwined. This is the type of book that is so rewarding upon rereading once you have absorbed the characters the politics, the geography, and the vocabulary. The second thing I loved about this is the alien psychology, and also the kind of psychological limits explored for Bren, the main human character, in response to living with very psychologically different aliens. Cherry always does psychology well, and frequently she's portraying characters going through difficult times, through confusion, betrayal, lots of frustrations, and this can sometimes be a bit too dark for me. I feel like some of her books actually veer into horribly maltreated mental illness and PTSD, but in Foreigner, it's really toned down. It's not as intense, and I found it worked so much more for me. If you've bounced off of any of Cherry's Alliance Union novels, like Down Below Station or Citine for being too grim and impenetrable, Foreigner is practically light compared to those. 
I have also always thought that Cherry does alien very well. Alien intelligences, alien thought processes. She manages to make her humanoid aliens so internally different from her human characters, and she succeeds very well with the Atevi in Foreigner, and that's so important because the psychological and even biological differences between Atevi and humans is the single concept that drives this narrative and the motivations and tensions in the story. Another thing I've always loved about this book is that the main character is an interpreter. In many ways, he functions a bit more like an ambassador or a diplomat, but he does do translation and interpretation work. His ability to speak and understand the Atevi language is very rare and very important. We don't get to see him doing that much of his actual job in this novel because of the plot circumstances, but there is a lot of discussion and thought about what certain Atevi words mean and how they can't be really rendered in the human language in English because they are alien concepts. And that is the type of language content that I eat up in science fiction. I love linguistics and science fiction, and this book comes to mind when I'm talking talking about that because there really is such an in-depth exploration of the Atevi language. There are also wonderfully complex characters. Even the secondary characters have very distinct traits and personalities. I have a lot of fondness for many of these characters because I have read the series before, and this time when I was rereading it, I could pick up on a lot of the early clues about what people would be like and what their relationships would be. As much as I love Bren, I probably have more of a fondness for many of the Atevi characters who are so well done, people like Jago and Banichi, Tabini, and Ilisidi. And lastly, for things that I think are done so well in Foreigner, we have good info dumping. The info dumping is done with finesse, and I use that word on purpose. Um, this has a very tight third-person POV. Everything that the reader knows, they get through Bren, through what he knows and his thought processes. And this could lead to some really leaden info dumping in conversations, for example, or other awkward things, but it's actually incorporated very well. Like I said before, the world building and the plot are intertwined, and so a lot of the info dumping actually is the plot here, and I like that. I mean, I like a good info dump. I don't mind them, but I do think that this was, like, it was melded with the rest of the story quite well. Now, as much as I love this book, it is not without its problems. I don't think that any of these frustrations I'm about to mention are deal breakers, but I do think they're worth discussing and knowing about before you get into the book so you know what you're getting into. The first thing that frustrated me more upon rereading this is the lack of answers for most of the book. For the first half, there are just more questions piled on top of each other and a frustrating lack of answers, a frustrating lack of communication. And we don't know why, and Bren, the main character, doesn't really know why either. Now, frankly, I think this is a hallmark of Cherry's style. If you have read and enjoyed previous books by her, you probably won't blink at the slow revelations and the slowly paced plot. But this does tie in with the next issue, which is that there is no conclusion. This story arc is three books long. Foreigner isn't really a standalone, in my opinion. There's really no payoff plot-wise when you get to the end. There are some cool revelations that might whet your appetite, but in many ways this is a setup novel for the next two books. Then there is Bren's lack of agency. This is not actually something that bothered me when I was reading this book, but it was pointed out to me by Kazan from Always Doing when we were discussing it, because she noticed that Bren, though being the main character, he can't do anything. He can't act or decide anything on his own. He has no agency. And I think that that, combined with the lack of answers, the frustration about no proper ending to the story, might be, well, just really frustrating to some readers. And then lastly, there is the black versus white issue. It is rather uncomfortable that the Atevi are black and the humans are white. This would be less 
odd if there were more racial diversity amongst the humans, but instead we're presented with a quite literal black versus white species divide. I do think that the Atevi are done well. They are black, not brown. They are completely and utterly black, and they do not seem to be any fictional representation of human people of color and their history. And this isn't like a repeat of colonialism either. But where it stumbles honestly is in how uniformly white the humans are, when it really doesn't seem like it should be that way. I could probably go on even longer about this book. I loved it. I have so many things to say about it, but I think I will leave it at that. Foreigner was the first book I ever read by C.J. Cherry, and I think I can definitively say now that it is my favorite work by her, by far. And even though I noticed more problems with it when I reread it, I would still say that this is wonderful science fiction. I would highly recommend this book for people who are looking for alien cultures, linguistics, and tons of political intrigue in slower-paced novels. So that is my discussion of Foreigner by C.J. Cherry. If you have read this book, please leave me your thoughts on it down below. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching this review, and I will talk to you again soon. And until then, bye.